Um, for table topics, each speaker will have one to two minutes to respond. I will show green at one minute, yellow at one and a half minutes, and red at two minutes. Thank you. So today's topic is math. I had to go way back into high school, into <laughs> chemistry. And no lie, I had to Google. <laughs> so today I'll be talking about atomic mass of elements and how elements impact our day to day. Okay. It'll be fun, I promise. <laughs> so with the copious amount of elements, I'll start with gold. Uh, gold has an atomic mass unit of 186.9, and it's a transition metal. Rick, tell us about the time. Tell us about what activity you would win a gold medal for. <laughs> Um, what I would win a gold medal for, well, let's see. I've talked about a lot of things that I like to do. Um, I guess probably in finding deals, travel deals. I'll have to <laughs> I'm going to be your travel guy. So Priceline, Hotwire. Um, I have actually had people call me up and try to get me to um, run out a trip for them, at least kind of... Um, design one for them because they figure I could do it cheaper than most. <laughs> I would tell you that the main thing you have to do to do really good and get the best deals is be flexible with your time. So mm -hmm. if you've got vacation time that you could use and take it at certain times of the year or decide to fly on certain days, you will do better. Flying on a Tuesday is much better than flying mm -hmm. on a Friday. Mm -hmm. And coming back from Vegas on a Sunday is going to cost you through the roof. So you're not mm -hmm. going to want to do those things. But uh, that is one of the things that I think I've done really well at, and I think I would probably get a gold medal with. And uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so lead, it, the atomic mass unit is 207.2, .2, and its group is post-transition metal group. Lead is also known to be soft and ma soft and malleable metal. Aaron, what is your soft spot that most people know? <laughs> I have a copious amount of spots, people. <laughs> Soft just isn't one of them. <laughs> just funny. I do want this good to work. A soft spot that I have that most people do not know. It's for my fish. As some of you do know, I have a fish tank on my desk. And I have a special place in my heart because I'm breeding my guppies. I call myself the Grand Guppy because now I am on my fourth generation of guppies. I'll have you know. I have you know. And actually, give a brief status update, I brought my new breeders here today because the strategy is that you want to keep the males separate from the females while they're young because instead of focus, focusing on getting their nutrients and groaning their magnificence, they just go after the girls. And we've been teenagers, so I think we can all relate to that a little bit. So right now, <laughs> right now, well, I know, I speak from my personal experience. This is my soft spot, people, so I get to speak on that. So I'm green, but I can take it to red. <laughs> and for me, I was so excited because I was able to, to transfer them there. I also have a small, can't say here, piece I have a small generation of females that are there that I I am all planning my generations based on the colors and it's working very very well. I had a blue crayfish up at my desk that I'm now transferred to my home pond and that was a female. Last week I bought a male blue crayfish and he is now here holding down the fort until he's big enough to go into the pond. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> I didn't know fish were your soft spot. Okay, so what's next? Neon. Uh, group is noble gas and atomic mass is 20.1. Sarah, tell us about a story of a foam glow neon party that you had in college that you were kicked out of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dulce, for such an interesting question. <laughs> I cannot say that I've ever been to a party like that, not just because I'm a good girl, but um, I did not go away to college, so I didn't quite have that college experience that I've heard about. If there has been an interesting event that I've gone to, I'm trying to think if I've, well, 
Oh, well, okay, so I guess I went to see Coldplay perform, and they did have a lot of uh, neon lights and some streamers and everything, and uh, that was really cool, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've also seen that there's some 5Ks where people can run through mm -hmm. and have the color explode, but I haven't done that either. <laughs> so I really haven't gone out. Um, crowds are a little bit intimidating to me in certain situations, and especially when it becomes like a big party mode, like EDM, or not EDM, um, EDC. EDC. That doesn't seem appealing to me at all to be with a lot of people who are raging. I kind of, like the concert, everyone's there to listen to good music, I'll take that, but uh, just for the partying for the sake of partying, uh, I try to stay away from that, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we're, we're moving on. <laughs> so Iron uh, has atomic mass of 55.8 and it's an, I can't say this, actinide series. Sure. Brian, tell us about the time you were pumping iron at Planet Fitness and you hurt yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Take it easy. Thank you, Dulce. First of all, it wasn't actually Planet Fitness. It was Gold's Gym. Because mm -hmm. I was working out with my good friend. I mean, I consider him my brother at this point. His name is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hey. I don't know if you know that right. But we were lifting and he was, he was showing me a certain way to do the shoulders, you know, the, the, you get you get the two dumbbells and you, you put them in front and then up and back up and it's supposed to be really good for your delts. But Arnold was like, "No, you are doing it wrong," <laughs> <laughs> and I did it wrong and I hurt my shoulder and I was wearing a sling for three weeks and Arnold said. You are not strong enough to work out with me. So, as much as we're brothers, he <laughs> no longer works out with me. So, I we only took one big picture together. I was huge in it, and then I lost all of the weight. And um, now I just eat In-N-Out burgers and uh, casually go to the gym downstairs in ES4. <laughs> Oxygen. Atomic mass is 15.94. It's a diatomic non-metal. Tell us about a time that you felt lightheaded. Sorry, Mark, tell us about a time you felt lightheaded and needed oxygen because you were embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> no. I can't think of I'm trying to think. I can't think of a time when I was embarrassed and I was a little short of oxygen. I could think of times where I've been short of oxygen though, not from being nervous, but from more physical activity. I was in Peru in June to do Machu Picchu and start that hike in uh, Cusco, which is at, I think, 12,000 feet. Yeah. And I noticed it immediately there. I didn't get altitude sickness, but just like walking up, uh, it's like a steep set of stairs or something like that. You get pretty winded, like very, very easily, um, almost very surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, but you know, normally where you'd be just walking around, it wasn't a big deal. But I remember very specifically, like there, you're taking a break here and there, maybe sitting down after walking around and just needing to chill a little bit because you're a lot higher altitude than you know here at sea level. We're pretty used to used to it, so it's not a big deal. But that's one of the times I could think where I was actually literally short of oxygen for from a physical exertion. I think this is the last one. So, last group is, sorry, last element in this group is chlorine. The atomic mass is 35.4 and it's a diatomic nonmetal. Mary Jane, tell us about oh. the summer job you had as a lifeguard in El Segundo's public pool. Oh, now. she was. <laughs> <laughs> sorry? Pick a guess. Pick a guess. Monica? Awesome. Tell us about the summer job you had as a lifeguard in El Segundo's public pool where you saved a child from drowning. <laughs> it was a nice summer day. And I was out by the water. 
And actually, it wasn't a pool, it was the beach. And I didn't bring any of my grandkids with me. It was just Aaron's child that was out there. <laughs> and this child was out there fending for his life. He was kicking, he was paddling, and he just kept going down, kept going down. And my panic was, I had promised Aaron I was going to take care of his child, but I don't swim. I only know how to surf. <laughs> I have no clue how to swim. And I had a life jacket. I said, okay, I have the life jacket. Can I get this life jacket to him without myself drowning? And I could see Aaron just hovering over me like a little ghost. That's my son. I told you to watch him. You better get him. And I panicked, so I ran. With all the strength that I had, I said, if I run fast enough, the water won't get me. So I ran out there, I put the life jacket on Aaron's son, and I saved the day. But then when I got Aaron's son, little Aaron told me, but what about Mary Jane? She's out there with me. <laughs> and I'm like, I, don't, I didn't see Mary Jane. Where is she? And he says, but I had her by the hand and we lost her, so I had to run back out there again, <laughs> not knowing how to swim. And it's amazing what you could do when you think that you work for a great place like Northrop Grumman. It gives you power, it gives you inspiration, and you can just like walk on water. And that's what I did. I went out there and said that. So, uh, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Right. This concludes our table topics portion of the meeting. That is specifically why I do not have children now, because I know <laughs> they're going to be the type to take their sails in the water knowing they don't know how to swim. Yes. <laughs> okay. And at this point, at this time, we will get our report from our functionary roles, awesome. starting with our eye counter. Thank you, Aaron, Mr. Toastmaster. Today, Aaron, you had two so's, two ands, two repeats. Not so bad. Mark, three uhs, one um, two you knows. Crispin, I counted one um when you gave your timing. Dulce, you had seven so's, three uhs. Rick, three uhs, three ums, two so's. I had just about one of everything. <laughs> Brian, one um, two so's, one, you, one and, one you know. Monica, one so, one like, one you know. And our guest speaker, Tamara, you, your word was, um, mm -hmm. you had about 21 <laughs> ums. Oh, <laughs> and I said I'm not going to do it, and I did it anyway. A couple of so's yes. sprinkled in there as well, but okay. thank you. Thank That's you. my report. <laughs> The beauty about having this report is really makes you start to think about how you speak. A lot of times as we become mm -hmm. more seasoned Toastmasters, you'll hear people on the radio, you'll see the leaders, and you'll be like, I'm hearing all um or so, <laughs> yeah, or things like that. So yeah, it's very good to be cognizant of. Now, may we have a